Melinda Camber Porter first published this interview with Nobel laureate Octavio Paz in the Partisan Review in 1986. But if you think you've read it before, you haven't. In the first version, Paz's remarks are redacted for content, and as English is not Paz's first language, for grammar and style. In this new volume, however, the interview is published in its entirety, and the results are wonderful. It is an understatement to say that the luminaries interviewed by Melinda Camber Porter transformed Western cultural production in the last quarter of the 20th century. One might have the impression that she was lucky to meet them. Her access to them, however, was not solely achieved through her role as cultural correspondent for the Times of London, but also through her reputation as an artist in her own right. As an accomplished artist in multiple media, Camber Porter is able to relate to poets, novelists, playwrights, actors, filmmakers, painters, and photographers via a shared experience. What is so interesting about her interviews is how Camber Porter draws each artist into a true and meaningful conversation about the creative process. In The Art of Love, a documentary on her work, Camber Porter highlights empathy as a sine qua non of her creative process. Empathy, according to Camber Porter, is a path to understanding and experience. And experience allows artistic exploration of the human condition. When one writes or paints, one has access to all these years that one has lived, she says. In her interview of Paz, one gets the feeling that Camber Porter is probing for more of those experiences. One's own are good, but incorporating the experiences of others is even better. Empathy between Paz and Camber Porter is established quickly in this interview, in part, I think, because their creative output shares several foundational sources. The first, without a doubt, is cultural exploration. Clearly, Paz cemented his reputation early on with Laberinto de la Soledad, a manifesto on the nature of Mexican culture. A professional diplomat, Paz's dual life as cultural ambassador and writer parallels Camber Porter's. A British expat working in Paris and a student of French language and literature, Camber Porter presses Paz on the impact of travel, living abroad, and the learning and speaking of other languages on an artist's identity and creative output. Secondly, Camber Porter and Paz banter about other artists, poets, and painters, and about how reading and viewing other people's work impacts your own. They like most of the same people, but Camber Porter, an incredibly informed consumer as well as producer of art and literature, does not hesitate to disagree with him. For Paz, this is not a conversation with just any reporter. Some nuggets that did not appear in the original publication include a truly helpful discussion about writer's block. Paz offers some practical solutions for breaking through difficult creative periods. Conversation about Duchamp, Picasso, Camus, and Matisse, previously cut, appears here, as well as discussion of the classical Spanish poets that made up Paz's early reading, Quevedo, Góngora, and Sor Juana Inés de la Cruz, the subject of Paz's book, Las Trampas de la Fe. Paz's English proficiency begins to break down a bit in his efforts to explain Central American politics, but the struggle is admirable and worth reading. In addition to a complete transcription of the interview, this volume includes Paz's Nobel speech in both English and the original Spanish, as well as further information on the work of Melinda Camber Porter. Most importantly, however, this volume provides great insight not only into Paz's vision of the world, but also, happily, into that of Camber Porter. It is my sincere hope that this publication, along with the rest in the series, will shed light on the transformative cultural production of the late 20th century, as well as on the work of Melinda Camber Porter. Mm -hmm.